Hey, welcome to the Art of NFT Business. This is Jonathan Goodman, your host and co-host, Florian Velo. We've got a great guest this week. It is Ty Duperon. Ty is the Chief Product Officer of Taffy, a high-end avatar engine serving the AR, VR, and game development market, as well as the CPO of Daz3D, a content and software company specializing in 3D human models. Ty has also worked on avatar projects for Xbox. Most recently, he's been involved with Fight Back Apes, an NFT project for owners of the Evolved Apes project that was rugged soon after launch. This NFT project will include unique, hyper-realistic ape avatars with full-body 3D models for expanded utility. Ty, thank you so much for coming. And before we even start, we have to remind everybody, this is not financial advice. We are not financial advisors. How are you, Ty? Thank you for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about Daz 3D. Sure, yeah. Uh, Daz is the, the hat. Uh, but So Daz is a program that's been around for about 20 years, actually. It started as a a community out of a program, 3D program called Poser. And the idea was Poser was, think of it like playing with action figures or dolls. And so you could take these 3D characters and you could pose them. As part of that 3D pipeline, it's super complicated. And Poser took just a piece of it. Rather than having to animate, rather than having, you just took a character, you posed it, and you can make posters, like graphics, whatever. Right. So Daz started as a group of people who were, using that software they started building content for that software oh. it was like, like called digital art zone or some such and they made this like forum like a website like like we're talking 20 years ago right so all of us were probably part of some internet forum or another but it was this internet forum community and over the over time it evolved um and then they started they created this marketplace and what's really cool is the marketplace created this space for artists who wanted to learn and get into 3d but didn't necessarily have traditional 3d backgrounds didn't like go to film school or work in games or whatever and they can be full-time professional 3d artists and they become beautiful like some best in class 3d artists and over time daz and poser kind of like separated strategies and paths so we created our own software called daz studio and unlike poser it's it's 100 free and so the concept of Daz and what Daz has always tried to do is create platforms really to feed back to this creator community and give them more areas to like provide content uh, or monetize. That's how it works for the creators. And then from the user perspective, they have an entry point into 3D that removes like the complex rigging, modeling, texturing and all that. And they can come in, take characters and you can take one character and you can make the same character, me, Jonathan, Florian, and all the content is, what, is what's called interoperable. And then you can make the characters tall, fat, skinny, whatever you want with these sliders rather than having to go in and model. And so that's just grown and grown over the years. Um, and th and that's, that's, what, that's what Daz is. And we're actually taking a look at the, uh, the website now where, you, where you're talking about all that, right? Yeah, exactly. And so you can kind of see in the background, you can see some of the software working. So you can see here at this scene, they take two characters, quickly make a cast, quickly make a scene, then you can animate it. And then, you know, if you imagine from a MoGraph perspective, or if you're trying to make um, a novel cover or uh, anything, it's really fast. And what's cool about this software is it's used by a lot of really famous artists, like, like Beeple, as an example, uses Daz Studio or Paris Hilton or Grimes have all used it in the past. There's a there's a company called The Digitals that has digital supermodels uh, that uses this. And then they do advertising with like Samsung or Volvo or whatever. And so it's really this like digital human engine, but it also has, we have a partnership with NVIDIA. So we have like easy high-end rendering and You've got these beautiful environments and, and all that. And so that, that's, that's the genesis of Daz. And then it evolved into more avatar content, which is when I got involved because the technology existed, right? And then it made sense to start applying to avatars. And then we started in looking at NFTs and 
it's funny because in our company, we talk about NFTs. Um, we're always talking about PFPs, but also digital goods, uh, backing of digital goods, whether that's a hat or a shirt or whatever. But we don't like, that's such a subset of what an NFT can do. But just whenever I talk about when we get into NFTs, it was always from an avatar perspective, a digital wearable perspective and a utility perspective. Whereas like the X copies of the world and whatever are making great one of ones. That's just, that's not what we do. Uh, it's, it's just an extension of this character avatar creator community system. On to like, why did Daz wanted to jump into like the so-called Evolve Ape like project? Yeah. Uh, I'm, in September. I mean, I love to talk about that. So what's really cool about Evolved Apes is, okay, what's not cool about, <laughs> about Fightback Apes is that Evolved Apes showed up, uh, took advantage of a lot of the early momentum and rugged a bunch of people, right? Terrible. I think we can all agree. I don't think that's a hard thing to say is like rugs are bad, right? And what's interesting about it is in that chaos, there was a bunch of first time holders in that pr product because it was one of the like, I I'm assuming you, you, you both have been around for a while, but like, you know, you had the crypto punks, you had the crypto kitties, then we had the like slow down. And then you kind of had that second wave. Um, and then, you know, ultimately culminating with like board apes and then fast follow fame ladies, like you had these fast follows. And in that fast follow section where you had like sneaky vampires, you know, crypto dads, Evolved Apes was in that like genesis, right? So there was a lot of excitement in the space, but everybody was looking for that next board ape, that next Cool Cats. Cool Cats was trading at like 12 at the time and whatever. And it was right before like Doodles showed up, right? So like it, it was this little microcosm of time. And so there was a lot of new people coming into the space. People had just sold every day and there was a lot of attention. And so a lot of new people got involved in this Evolved Ape. It, to them, it looked legit. I mean. It was run by a dude named Ev Evil Ape. So I don't know if that was a red flag or not, but at the time, like everybody was excited and everybody was doing undocks teams and, you know, yay, decentralization. And so they mint out, there's a lot of hype around it and it's a rug and really fast and it's a rug. But what's interesting is there was people in the community that were like scared, confused. And one of the community leaders was like, this is bullshit. Like why? Like, and so then there was four of these community leaders that kind of like came together, talked to the community and created their own discord called fight back apes. And they're like, basically, what do we do? And they started coming up with this idea of trying to like create some value because they're like, we cared about this community. We cared about each other. We build these relationships. Anybody who's been in one of these projects knows that like up until mint, there's a lot of camaraderie. There's a lot of excitement. There's like personality that develops and whatever and so that's when I found them uh I was actually unrelated I was working on something else we were working towards the Clonex uh release at the time and we were I was doing something on Twitter and somebody sent me a note saying hey Daz you should check out this project. And they just knew that I was the COO, CPO at Daz. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll check it out. Not thinking much of it, right? You get invited to discords all the time. And so I go in and I lurk for a while. Don't say anything. Don't introduce myself and just watch. And I did a whole bunch of Google research. I found a Vice article about what happened. And, and I really like was impressed by the, the current leaders. I listened to a couple of their AMAs and I was and I was just like, man. And so you're, you're not really taking over Evolved Day. Correct. Right? No, it, it has was, nothing to do with it. it. It was, it was rugged and everyone still, that guy, evil ape still has the keys to the social media, Correct. the wallet, the including the contract, all this. And so what we're trying to do is actually detach the two. And so what happened was the reason, you know, the genesis of all this is we saw this and we were as dads, we're like, man, like our ethos is about like empowering creators and finding ways for people to get exposure they wouldn't have otherwise got. We have a lot of partnerships and whatever that made the industry look bad. It made everybody look like a shyster, right? Like if you take one gypsy cab in New York, you're like, oh, they're all going to rip me off, right? And so that was kind of the ethos for me personally when I saw this. It was like, 
in my opinion, this is bad for Web3. It's, it's like people making excuses for people who make rugs or people saying it's okay or people saying like, you know, you're, it's like, I think that'll always stop us from legitimizing. And I know there's DGENs who are like, oh, we don't want to be mainstream, but eventually you do, you have to, right? And this kind of thing, every time this happens, if all to Kotaku talks about, if all CNN covers is, you know, the rug pulls or, you know, I saw an article the other day, someone lost 15 grand in crypto. And I know most of my crypto friends are like, I'd kill to only be down 16 grand. But like, it sounds bad to people who aren't in crypto, right? And so anyway, so this is why, so we reached out and we said, would you be interested in us collaborating on this project with you? We'll bring our resources, we'll bring our advertising, we'll bring our, our you know, our marketing connections, our, our technology, the DAS technology, We'll be able to offer avatars for people. We'll be able to like redesign the collection and like give you something special that would be new, uniquely yours. Um, and we just really hit it off with the founders and felt like this was a cool thing we could do. And and yeah, that's how we got involved. My understanding is, is that you're going to release 20,000, giving 10,000 to the people that had bought into the Evolved Apes and, and then 10,000 for... Uh, you know, a new audience. Is that right? Yeah. And so the supply hasn't totally been set. This, this all came from like, like us trying to explain the idea. Um, the goal that it will never be more than 20,000. We might actually mint like 15,000. Uh, it really comes down to how many of those original EA rug victims opt in. So what we're doing is we're, we're giving them a free plus gas mint pass that is, will be, they'll be able to redeem it reveal and they'll get one to one for whatever evolved date they had to the new project. The reason we plan to monetize some of them is to bring money back into the community so that they can continue as any other NFT community, right? Like if they want to do like community projects, if they want to do meetups, if they want to do, you know, if they want to fund and help other rugs or whatever like you know what i mean like it's like without without money in a project it's really hard for a project oh, to yeah. succeed so like we originally thought about just potentially just doing like okay here's a free plus we'll do a 10k we'll just replace the old collection and at least then people have access um and they have ownership and all that because i mean all that's super sketchy on evolved apes no one actually knows um like the nfts are worthless but like even if you liked them for the art like there's no clear understanding of like where that own, our ownership lives and all that. And so this would, right. this would clear all that up, um, create value. We hope it becomes like a really well-respected collection. It's the art's cool. The story is really neat and all that's great, but it's just much clearer there. And so we, anyway, we talked about just doing the 10 K free plus gas. And then the challenge was sure. But then what, right? Because like, ideally this is something that like, gives them what they were looking for the first time around, but it's now it's legitimate, right? So it's just bringing other, other holders and new blood into the community. I was just like curious now, like, as you, you mentioned, like you're trying to like help this project revive in a way, just like creating a parallel, like collaboration, like trying to bring those holders that got scammed into like that legit project. Would you let them take the, those community leaders take the, the lead in that? Or would you, yeah. or would you just still be there, like just trying to follow him, follow and help them go through the process after minting, of course. Yeah. And so what, it, it's, it's going to be a, like a collaboration, right? So the, the founders are involved. Um, they're doing outreach, they're help. They're still leading the community because I mean, they built it. Right. And so post mint, we will have the, the roadmap where we're talking about like we have a, a comic book artist uh who's a published image image comics artist doing a comic book around the lore we the writer is like he's worked on spider-man batman like really cool stuff uh we have a little cartoon series we're working on a couple other things like that like little web stuff right um and so we're gonna work through that roadmap and then uh, once that's complete then we'll see where it's at. And then if the, if they want our help, we'll continue. If not, it's something where we can say, great, you know, here we accomplish what we set out to accomplish and we wish you the best or like whatever. Right. And like, 
but we were just committed to that that section you, you just you just mentioned the roadmap like what what's where are you right now in the roadmap like what's the plan like when is minting yeah so if you scroll down on this there's a little cool roadmap graphic i think it's cool um but where we are right now is we are currently building the characters and the content. Uh, we're in the middle of production. We have started our outreach. The contract is written, ready to be deployed. And so walk, walk me through, walk me through these lines because <laughs> I understand, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, creatively I can get this, but it might help to kind of, you know, walk through if we start at this dot here and we just go to this dot. Now, of course, I mean, it would be nice. There's nothing that I can really click on, right? It's just all one, oh, yeah. one yeah. board. So so what does this mean to you, that, that floppy disk there? So that's the mint pass. So step number one is going to be handing out the mint pass. And, and so if you scroll up a little bit, I think we, we talk about what it is. But uh or maybe it's down i don't okay, know there's well, a mint pass we'll, we'll there's a mint pass on here somewhere yeah. uh but the mint pass is is the token and the reason we're separating it this way rather than just doing a hey here's a mint and eventually we'll reveal is again we don't know the redemption of the middle the the, the holders right and so right. we we set an opt-in to try and get a sense of it we got a pretty good response we've sent out uh, paid advertising, like we're trying to get a hold of as many of them as possible. And so there's 10,000 that are reserved for them, but we're not going to mint the 10,000 if say 4,000 uh, op like show up, right? Like we're not going to, we're not going to create that supply will just go away because it was, it was for them. Uh, so that's the mint pass. And so, so to make the mechanic easy, we have a mint pass that everyone can claim once we know that those mint passes will be traded for a revealed uh, token. And okay. so that that's step number one. And uh, then we move down to, is it funny pages? Is that Yeah, and so the only reason I did that is um, comic books and comic strips confuse people. So we, yeah, there you go, there's your mint Here, Here's a perfect example, right? So this is yeah. this week's uh, bananas. Uh, uh, yeah, comic. yeah, so, so every week, every Sunday we're releasing a comic strip by uh, an artist creator named Plaid Klaus. Uh, it's funny, actually, I worked with him back in the day in the video game industry on a Lego game. And at work one day, because he was bored, he made this. Oh. And it was a situation we had at work, which was super fun. Uh, and this was my buddy, Nick, and this was him. And this was our boss, Chris. And then way, oops, wrong way. Way over here was me, the Canadian Sasquatch. Uh -huh. uh, but anyway, so he had made this. And when we were like, man, what a cool, like we should do something to promote this project. And so I reached out to Klaus and I was like, "Have you, how? when's the last time you did comic strips? He's like, ah, oh, like a three panel gag strip or four panel gag strip. I was like, yeah. And he's like, only on my spare time. And I was like, cool. And so he, he got really involved. He's been writing. This is all him uh, based on the world we're in. And he came up with the concept of effing bananas and these these two um, basement stoners like thinking about the world. And anyway, so this is this is all his work and he's super talented. Very so fun. That's, so that's then, happening right now. Then we're going to move into, I guess, then you'll produce the comic book. So now this is where it gets messy on purpose okay. is um, we don't have like because now it's a production problem so if you look at the cartoons we've actually released one the second one's coming soon and we're working with a company called fish flight studios that's doing that um and they're kind of in the tone of the loki show you know when he goes to the 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 loki fascist versus. yeah yeah and they're and they're in the they're in that conference and it's like super fun but like the message is really dark okay. so those are those are currently being rolled out then yes, post mint, you'll get the comic book. Um, merch will be available, obviously, because that's like generic and you need to. Um, 3D models, because that's what we do. Uh, so there'll be 3D models for the assets. And then we'll be setting up 3D model pipelines, uh, which says be your ape. And that is so you can actually join conversations like this as your character. Oh, uh, and we've got really cool tests on that. 
uh, and it looks really good. And in a second here, I'll, I'll, I'll shut off my camera and I'll rejoin as my board ape. Just give me two secs. Yeah, let's do that. That's what that do looks that. like. This is a 2D uh, version and I, we have 3D versions and we have 3D face capture. And so uh, it allows you to just be embody whatever it is. And w- what I really like about this, and this is part of, you know, what we do as Daz is it makes it tangible, right? Because now you have an actual output with your, uh, your asset. Right. Now, this is a Board Ape Yacht Club character, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. I this have a sample of our character. I'll show you. But yeah, yeah this is this is my this is my Board Ape. You know, Florian, like you said, that the metaverse allows for it doesn't have to be what you expect. Yeah. And if we can get further down that path, it's like you add a little bit of whimsy to, to your life. You know what I mean? Oh, interesting. So this guy, this is... Is this you talking now and moving now or we? No, no. So this is, I don't have a hooked up version. This is actually a member of our team named Jeffrey, uh, just doing, showing the test. So this is tracking his face uh, from a webcam and he's puppeteering. And so this is the whip and we'll have, um, this will be something we'll roll out with the, with the project. That's a lot of fun. Wow. That is very, very cool. So, so in other words, everybody who gets an NFT will eventually get an avatar like this. Correct. Yeah. Excellent. You could essentially do this for all of the projects that have been rubbed, right? Yeah, exactly. Why why particularly Evolved Apes? Are you invested in it? Is somebody that you know? Um, I wasn't. I am now. Um, uh, Taffy and Daz as a whole, we bought, uh, we sent out a call when we first started that we said, look, um, if there's anybody here who's like just been sitting on these and really just so upset, you know, like some people burn them. Like there's less than 10 K of the EA supply anyway. Um, And we were like, we'll buy them out up to this number. Like just as a company, like we said, you know, in order to get the mint pass, you need to hold. And so we're like, we'll follow the same rules. We will buy our own giveaways for this project from other EA um, evolved apes holders just because again, the point was to create value. So we set a, va- a value number and told the community if anybody wants out list at this value and we will buy them all. Uh, wow. And we bought a whole chunk of them. Uh, and so no, I, just, I just have to ask, I, I don't mean to get too technical, yeah. but isn't it still possible for evil ape to just wipe everything from IPFS? Yeah. And so like, that, that's why this is like, this project is going to be, like essentially we're creating a time point for evolved apes holders to say, okay, I'm no longer in evolved apes. I'm moving on to fight back apes. Cause I don't want to be like, like we're leaving it in the past. Right. So right. our artwork, our story, our, um, it won't be on the same IP. Like, so yeah, at any point, if you're an uh, involved ape holder right now, you could wake up one day and your NFT is cleared because right. all you're buying is a token, right? He, right. Like, um and so yes yeah, so we're not relying on any of that that like it's the same reason we're not doing any kind of trait carryover we're not worrying about rarity parity or anything like that for two reasons number one uh we can't it's unpredictable and we don't know what it looks like we also don't know what the rarity chart looks like and a few other things and then number two if we're trying to bring new people into the collection uh for the collection's benefit you can't have like those people not have access to like like, why would I buy in if I don't have the same shot at having like the rarity scores, right? So, and then there was a couple uh, traits in the previous collection that like we just wouldn't have done anyway. Like, there's a little chaplain mustache, which you can guess looks a lot like Hitler. Oh, and there's, right. there's a few other things that are like just we wouldn't do, like, right. like pimp hats and things like that. That just like to me is like, like no reason to do it. And so, so we've completely moved away from the look the feel and so like all evolved apes is doing for like the fight back apes collection is giving you an entry point i see and so and it, and it's we don't want to hide from it as being part of the history because i think there's something that could be learned here if we're successful and which we hope we are but if we're successful this this hopefully will be a blueprint or inspire other collections. I think fame lady squad is a great 
collection to look at when a rug happens to see the community survive, the brand survive and grow stronger. And it is what it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Like if we're able to do the same thing, maybe there's other collections that have happened where people are like, you know what, screw it. Like, like, like we don't have to just accept this because somebody wanted to make a quick buck. And do you feel that you you will make your money back? I mean, we're having a very hard time in the NFT space right now. So I don't know if Daz, if we will, I do know the holders will get more value. Like, okay, I can't say that because who knows? I am very confident that the holders will get more than the current value of their Evolved Apes assets from this, right? And so that's all we can control. Um, obviously, the market's tough unless you're Goblin Town. Um, but I, I think, you know, whether Daz, we make huge revenue on the mint or not, I don't know. But that wasn't really the plan. Uh, so we're we're willing to like take a shot, I guess, because I, I just believe it's the right thing to do. Um, and and we felt like as a company, you know, nobody has to worry about this being a rug or, or anything you can't like, like we're a company, like we'll, we'll do what we said we'll do, whether the market responds to it or not. I, I don't know. So, yeah. So if I understand correctly, this is your, the first project that Daz is trying to like save or take over. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Um, our previous projects were, we did champion uh, apparel. We did a project with them last year. Then we did, the Coke friendship box. Then we did, uh, we are the utility partner for clone X. We're still working on that project. Um, we did, um, our own PFP collection called non fungible people that focuses on, uh, female identifying female born and non-binary characters. Mm. Um, and there's a whole bunch of diversity and there's wheelchair character and all that because the concept we believed that if like web two, incels like run web three i think we really miss an opportunity to be special uh like the 4chan communities of the world like like if the bros like really continue to build i think like you miss something so we wanted to do something different so we did that project in december um are you you suggesting that underneath the uh, underneath all this is some kind of alt right Mm, mm, mm. You're using words that are, uh, are, at least on the East Coast here, are a little bit triggering. So, oh, sorry, I'm not. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Right. Uh, what I'm getting at is, you see a lot of Pepe the Frog in NFT memeing. You see a lot of 4chan um, culture in the early NFTs. Now, if you've been on 4chan at all, if you've been part of the old, you know forever alone comics and things like that 4chan was popular for um barely legal um things or you know chive on there would be like barely 18 year old girls and it was all very masculine heavy um i do worry personally that there is some of that in the nft culture and there isn't a lot of space for lgbtq female creators and things like that and so so, so that's what guys, I mean. I'm so not you t- guys produce this as a, as an alternative to what is a Correct. male dominated industry currently, right? And not just males, but creating space for um, non-binary or or male born female identifying, right? Um, and so this was what, before. What was, the, what was the name of that project again? Uh, it's called Non Fungible People NFP, oh. Oh, uh, right. and so that uses the avatar system. You can take the characters like I showed you in the video calls and things like that. Um, we've tested them in Unreal, Unity, things like that. And so it's just was really cool yeah. uh, way to reach out. But what we were trying to do was show people you can be represented in the space as well, right? And so again, just to, I'm not saying the Illuminati like alt-right is running this, but there is some level of like, very white male dominated and we were trying we have a lot of females on our team we have non-binary we have queer identifying and we wanted to do something different um and so that's what we did in december and now fight back apes was just is is kind of the next project we've gotten involved in where we think you can also do some good 
And did you did I didn't hear it? Maybe you did say it already, but I didn't hear uh, the actual release date. Is there a release of date? Fight now? Back Apes? Yeah. So Fight Back Apes is not. We don't have an official date, uh, only because right now we have the mint pass. We're targeting June, um, so soon. Uh, but obviously, with the current state of NFTs, we haven't like locked that down yet because we don't know what's happening with NFT NYC yet. And we don't know what's happening with the overall market. And we don't want to drop it in the middle of something that's going to confuse people. Because again, the goal is to create that value. And so we don't want to torpedo it. So we're a little bit up in the air still about when that mint will happen. I can when tell you. Say, when you say you, you don't know what's happening with NFT NYC, what does that mean? Oh, like what projects have big announcements? What's dropping? Oh. What we're going to do? Uh, we haven't talked about that yet, things like that. And so it's like, th that's a big NFT event that we don't know what the like, like think about it this way. Um, if you're doing a marketing calendar and other side was going to drop, you didn't want to be in the week leading up or the week leading out of that because like there was no liquidity in anybody's like bag, right? And so it's, it's really hard to get any kind of attention. And we know we're not that. And so, so it's just like without, we don't yet know how, how June's going to shake out to know exactly what day uh, we'll be dropping it. I mean, I think that that's a great thing to do because you need to, uh, you know, we, we all need the, the industry and the market to kind of kick <laughs> off again, right? So yeah. there are other projects that I know that have stopped their minting uh, schedule and, and all of that. And it's yeah. tough, right? Because we, you almost need one of us to like kick it off. It's just, right. it's hard, right? Because you're like, like, it's not, especially in this project, it's not just monetary. Like, like if it was our project and we were just doing it because we're like, oh, this is part of our release calendar. It would be like, okay, well, well you right. know, some are hits and some aren't and we'll see how it plays out. Right. But because this is a commitment to an existing community, it's like, I don't know. I feel like we owe them to try and do it like the best we can. And that, that includes the market timing. No, I think, I think that that's a very valid reason as to why not to do the launch. You're, you're simply waiting to see what happens with NFT NYC, what's going to be announced. If there's going to be a big announcement, if something's yeah. going to kick the industry off again. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah, totally. Tell us, can you tell our audience how someone can protect themselves against a rug pull? Do you have any advice? <laughs> yeah, so we're actually working with um, a couple of companies that we'll be bringing some, some stuff into like our Discord and our website around um, NFT safety uh, and things like that. I think, I think the toughest thing about rugs is, well, I think there's, one of the things I'll say is I think there's a definition challenge. And so, I come from the video game industry where you could argue that a whole bunch of projects and games that dropped weren't successful. Absolutely. Right. And, and so like, especially as soon as mobile gaming started and those, to me, that's not a rug pull or even a soft rug because that's, you know, they did what they said they were going to do. You got what you paid for. It just didn't, it didn't last forever. Or it didn't go as big as it could. Yeah. When I, when I think of a rug, I think of people who are intentionally being nefarious Right. And so they're coming in with the goal of taking your money and disappearing. Yeah. I think a soft rug is when a company, a community, a company, or, or a team makes a grand gesture, a grand plan, and they probably think they're going to follow through. Right. Then they get to the other side of Mint and realize they have no resources, no skill, or the community can be toxic. Or like, like I'll tell you, when we minted one of our projects, some of the messaging that came through Discord, like me personally, I was like, wow, that like, that hits hard. But, you know, I talked to friends and, and colleagues in, in, in the space and they're like, you, you got to just move on. Like it's going to, and, you know, and, I, and I, I've, I've dealt with bad video game reviews. Like I've been flamed before, but it was just like, all right, cool. And you move on. And a soft rug to me is when somebody can't continue and just finish what they did or deliver what they said, but they probably intended to. Right. And then there are failed projects where the project shipped, the project delivered everything they said they were going to do, and it just didn't hold value for whatever reason, right? The community moved on, and so they didn't do a second roadmap. And yeah. so I think 
The challenge is with the first one, the real rugs, is because they're intentionally nefarious, you know, without going too far, like, till tinfoil hat or whatever, because I think you already think I'm a conspiracy theorist, but hang on, um, is like, they're, they're equivalent to con artists. Like, their goal is to make you think everything's fine so that you ape in. And so the challenge for me, and the thing I would say, is obviously the the classic do your own research is only so helpful because people don't know how to read contracts, right? Like it's, it's, it's code. If you don't know how to read code, it's hard to do. Right. So I would say, if you're going to get involved in a project, the discord is not going to give you a feel because everyone's excited till it mints. Yep. I would look at the team. This is what I do when I, when I get involved and again, not financial advice, but how I look at it. If someone says they're going to make, let's say a play to earn game. I want to see some, history where they've shown the ability to do that whether that's on their linkedin and they've made mobile games before or they've made web games like i want some indication and i know that's unfair to like the hobbyist trying to cut through but it's really the only way to be safe and it's like okay like i believe you have at least the chops to cut to do what you said you're going to do and then for me that's that's when i get involved but it's all about the creators, it's all about track record for me because it's the only way to be sure. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it sucks because then new projects just don't get the attention, but it, it, it's tough because influencers aren't your friends, right. right? Influencers are trying to pump their own bags. And if someone goes, wow, you know, this went 10X since I talked about it 20 minutes ago, there's a reason they're dropping that. And you'll see the same thing on four or five different influencers. Yep. And so it's like, you can't really trust other people, which is like a shitty thing to say, but like, you know, and alpha groups have their own goals and there's, so it's really, it's, and then I guess the last thing I would say, because you can't a hundred percent avoid it is that in Vancouver, we have um, our, our liquor board is provincial and they, uh, and so is our gambling board. And they always say, know your limit, play within it. And it's like really the best advice you can get because at the end of the day, like, this is gambling. Like if you're not in it just for the art, like if you go in, I'll give you an example. Sorry. I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, go, go, go. But, we, but we just did a project with DC comics for the bat, for bat cows. So we yep. did these Batman cows. Really cool. I don't know if you'd ever resell one for more than you paid, but I know being involved in the project, DC comics is going to give you way more than $300 of right. value for it. You're going to get, you know, exclusive collectibles, access to creators, uh, access to Canon, like things like that. And so as a fan, like if that's what you're buying the NFT for, or if you're buying it for the art or whatever, then just pick a value you're comfortable paying. And there's no, it's, it's win-win, you can't lose. But yeah. if you are in it to trade, if you're in it to find that blue chip, like it's tough. Like it's, I, I know that doesn't really answer your question, but it's, no, it's it, it it's definitely tough. does. I mean, look, you know, this, this podcast and, and Florian and, and myself, we are art collectors. So yeah. the projects that we have really gone into are projects that either we have loved the art or we've done our research on the team and we've believed in the team. And we, I don't think we've gone wrong so far yet, Florian, have you? It's, it's something we've talked about. And I told you about like a few times, like in the last few weeks, like I've been a little bit overwhelmed by everything that was going on and, and, and all those like new projects coming in with a lot of hype and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's hard to take in. And I'm like, okay, I need to step out of it. Cause there's so many more rock pools. And, and of course, like I collect because in the first place, I love the art. Like I yeah. don't mind, even if it doesn't have the value that I'm hoping for, I like what I'm seeing. So at least I have something that I do like and I'm playing with the money or the cryptocurrency that I'm willing to lose as well. But still like the market has been so yeah. crazy lately and all those rock pools that for me personally, it kind of like take me a little bit like a step back and just like watch what's going on and try to like maybe do more research or like listen a little bit more what's going on or look before going back into it. Yes. I'm in the same boat and I, I'm working with a lot of like a lot of my friends and other collectors are feeling the same way where it's like there's too much like it, it actually reminds me of when mobile games first started on iOS where early on there were these moments where like these people just cut through and it was really cool and there was these magic elements and then it got to the point where people realized there was money to be made and Android store Apple store got flooded 
And then all of a sudden you started having to lean into publishers and all these things like traditional gaming markets just to get noticed because it, 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 it is that, or it's really hard to know what you want to invest your time in. And, you know, like, I, I mean, you can see over my, over my other shoulder, I have an etching on my, like, like I love art. I, I grew up as an artist. And so for me, like, that's what I got into NFTs for. And it's tough because like, to your point, like there's somewhere you just don't know, but then there's things like, like doodles. I bought into doodles early and sure it went well, but I only bought it because I really like burnt toast. Like, like to me, that was all that mattered. And so that's another thing. If you're, you know, if you're trying to avoid rug pulls is like, you guys were talking about art. Well, if you know artists from the art world, like traditional artists, like a Murakami or one of those that you have a, a real like emotional connection to, or if they've inspired you along the way, cool thing about his NFTs is they're a low price. Like, I can afford one of his seeds a lot better than I can afford one of his gallery pieces. And that's really cool for me is like to feel like part of that, you know? Yeah. We're both in the Bungie project and we're, mm. we're thrilled. We, we just, we love that artwork. We, we think he's a great artist. He's going to be at NFT NYC. So oh, we're nice. happy about that. Yeah. It's uh, it, you know, again, but uh, in terms of flipping, then you're taking a huge risk, yeah. you know, and though, uh, look, I met people that have said, you know, they've quit, they quit their job. This was months ago. They quit their job. They made more, you know, in flipping NFTs than they did the entire year in whatever job they were previously in. And I said, you know, that's great. But, you know, we're in a, it, this is a blip in a market. This is just right. a, for a gold rush. And sure enough, in that gold rush, there's a lot of panhandlers that are handing out pans that don't work and shovels that aren't good and things like that. So you have to kind of learn from that. It was really great having you on the show today. I'm really glad that we were able to do this, Ty. I wish you all the best with, you know, everything that you're doing. Daz 3, 3D, the Batman cowl, which I took a look at, and that is awesome. Uh, you know, this project, uh, helping the evolved, the is it the evolved apes and now this is now fight the, back apes yeah fight back apes is is your 3d thing uh we would love to hear when you guys are going to release this and help you guys and that would be we really loved having you on the show today thank you so much yeah it was awesome to meet you both um hopefully we can hang out in new york if not i totally get it um uh, but yeah no it was awesome thank you so much um i know it's memorial day in the state so i hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your long weekend Thank you very much. Have a great whenever, time. Whenever you come down to Miami, let me know. I will. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Guy. Bye. Well, that was a lot of fun. Once again, another very good interview. How are you doing, Florian? Yeah, great. Um, a bit tired from 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 the weekend, but it's a good it's a good tired. Let's put it that way. So, so the the game was delayed. The game was delayed three hours. Uh, we ended up starting playing at ten to so seven. And then it was delayed yeah. again in halftime. 10 right. 30, yeah, because we lost the lights at halftime. So we lost like 15 minutes. Uh, ended up going home like at 1, 1 30 in the morning. Wow. And usually when after games, we you I can barely sleep. So we just yeah, it's oh, so it, you're all you're so pumped up that you can't really get yeah, much sleep. Exactly. So you'll take a nap. You took a nap though, right? You did something. Uh, yeah, I kind of like slipped in and out this morning. I'm just <laughs> gonna try to sleep in like tomorrow. Tomorrow will be good. Tomorrow, there's no no games. And when's your next practice? Tuesday? Uh, tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night. Okay, so you'll get a good night's sleep tonight. Good, good, good. Yeah. Let's continue the show. Should we continue the show? Well, let's talk about the news. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you know, I I think uh, we can we can discuss all of these elements. Let's talk about GameStop NFT wallet first. First, I've got to show you this amazing website they they are just kicking it and i have to say just so that everybody understands i am an investor in gamestop i do have stocks uh but damn this is a kick-ass image just makes me so excited you know this whole thing so they have um hold on just now that you've seen that uh GameStop has just released a beta version of the NFT wallet. So uh, I have not downloaded the wallet yet, but the wallet can send and receive cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens. 
So the wallet can send and receive cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens. The rollout of the NFT wallet comes ahead of GameStop's partnership with Immutable X for their NFT marketplace, which is also scheduled for this year. The marketplace will be environmentally friendly with 100% carbon neutral and no gas fees. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We're going to have more wallets now. It is. Like, I feel like there's more and more wallets being created by those big companies. and. It's going to become like the new banks going to be become overwhelming and be like, which one should I choose? Which one give me the best? Um, uh, like, um, how do you say this in English? I forgot. Um, like the bank best. for the buck. Yes. Bank exactly. for the buck is what we say. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it, you know, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that at some point, like, for instance, we've had the experience where people have sent us stuff in a wallet that we don't, we now needed to download and it didn't really have like the elements like MetaMask, it didn't work as well. Um, and like we look at the Wax wallet and that's very easily hackable. So we don't get involved with that. But GameStop is going to put just based on that image that they've had created, which looks so incredible. I am, I think that this is going to be like the second, if not the primary wallet that could take over this space metamask is good maybe gamestop can create something better and then the question is will you be able to choose which wallet you want to have right can i now move all of my nfts from my metamask wallet over to the gamestop wallet i, I think i think that's eventually going to be what happen, happens right because you know, how many credit cards do people have? I mean, okay, some people have like 14 different credit cards. Most people should have one or two credit cards. That's it. I don't want a hundred different wallets. You know, some of my NFTs are here. Some of my cryptocurrencies are over there. That's not going to, that's, nobody's going to be happy with that. When we move over to like a larger audience that is, you know, jumping the shark and, you know, the, the major, the, the general adopters have taken over they're not going to want to have all these multiple wallets. But in terms of gaming, what GameStop can do with this wallet, I am just super excited. So yeah. let's talk about Luna. Well, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that's exciting because like GameStop, like the, the gaming industry is so big that they might just release some, I don't know, NFT for some of the games that we're releasing. And you actually need that wallet to be able to play the game or own one of those. We, we've seen those like play to earn like, project that are coming out i think gamestop wants to get into the, the, the game as well and just be so exclusive with that the creating that wallet yeah i'll tell you something so if gamestop can create a pte that is easy to use oh man i am definitely going to get involved in that i mean right now like you have these pdes but you're buying them at a very high gas fee. You're interacting on a on a smaller level, but GameStop would be absolutely huge. So let's talk about Luna 2 for a second. So a new, so just so everybody knows, just a big update in case you didn't know, Luna crashed, USDT was impacted, Terra was destroyed, Do Kwon is a wanted man, possibly going, you know, in front of the courts at some point because of all this scamming. But now that he's releasing a new Luna crypto cryptocurrency and he's airdropping it to anyone who holds Luna and Terra USD. But every time they, so they're releasing this super slowly. They did a big chunk like two days ago where everybody got, you know, coins in their wallet. And every time they release more of the airdrop, people are just turning around and dumping it. Luna 2 lost almost 73% of its initial value. It peaked at $19.54 and then has declined to the last time I checked it, which was $5.18, which honestly, I mean, if you have 200 Luna that then converts to 200 Luna 2 at $5.18, despite whether you bought it at $100, you get a little bit of money back. So that's what they're doing. They're clearing yeah, I out. I don't think they're like, uh, make you like even meaning like if, if you hold like 200 Luna, I don't think they're giving you 200 Luna too. I don't know where I've seen that, but I think it was like some math, like formula just to like know how much Luna 2 you would get. Oh, but, so it's less. Yeah, but this, wow. it's, 
I don't know. Like I, I've, I was not involved. I've just followed everything and what was going on on the Twitter space on the social media. Listen, um, Florian, I know, I know you don't follow this stuff on Twitter, but I have to tell you something. I have tweeted out a couple of nasty things about Luna and people have attacked me. I can't believe it. Like I'm, I basically put out a tweet that said, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice shame on me investing in luna 2 is for lunatics and that's that group is called lunatics and then people really messaged me back and they were like you don't know what you're talking about doquan is going to save us all i mean it's real like mental stuff these people are pouring more money into luna 2 thinking that they're going to make the same money that they invested in from luna 1 it's it's i don't know where i've seen that too but there was something comparing like when internet started, there was a bunch of companies. There was probably like a thousand different companies. It was like betting on who was going to be like come out of it. It was probably one or two, three. Now they're like showing like crypto with like 20,000 different cryptocurrency. And now it's like, how can you handpick them and decide like who's going to get on top of it? Like in the future, it's pretty practically impossible. But right now we, in a, we were such in a bullish market that just all the price were going crazy. But you would agree, you would agree that if if you put money into, let's say Shiba Inu or let's say uh, Cardano. Well, if, if I put money in Luna and, right. and, you drop and then the, the, the founder would be like, oh, I'm launching Luna 2 to save it. I would, it means like I believe in the project. So I probably would try and be like, okay, well, look, I hope he's going to do something because I've lost so much that I'm hoping like he's going to be able to, to like bring it back to life. But it's, it, it, when you get in those projects, when you have like, you put your money, sometimes you put your savings into it. Of course, you're going to hope that it's going to come back, but rationally and re in reality, it's, it's another story. You wouldn't, you wouldn't invest more into Luna 2. Oh, I wouldn't invest more. No, no, no. Right, 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 right. But you would you would hold the Luna 2 token in the hope that someday you may make back your money. Like you don't lose money until you sell. Right? Absolutely true. True. So, so if you invested in Luna and you really wanted to make it, just hold it and see what happens. But at this point, like there's no way you can cut your loss because it's already at the, at the lowest. Right. Right. It's going to be. It's not, it's not financial advice. It's just like pure. It's my way of thinking, basically. This is a great segue to talk about the Wabby Punks. You know, I was able to grab another nine Wabby Punks, which is my favorite NFT project, for absolutely zero dollars. People were just giving them away. I used uh, an incredible website genie uh and it only cost me 60 dollars in gas so in genie what you can do it lets you quickly buy and sell and sweep across marketplaces all in a single transaction it basically saved me 40 percent on gas fees compared to buying directly from the marketplace where i'm buying one and i'm paying gas and i'm buying this allowed me to select the ones that i wanted to buy and just swoop in with a little bit of gas and you know in fact in this case genie didn't have wabby punks listed and i dm them and i said hey could you add wabby punks they did it in less than an hour they messaged me back and then i grabbed it for 60 bucks i grabbed another nine and i just i don't understand this is what i wanted to talk about if you even if you got your wabby punk for free and they were giving them away originally for free it cost you something to put it on the market you have to pay the fee, your gas fee, up front, or maybe maybe I paid the gas fee, so I guess that didn't happen. But they put it up, and they're literally just letting it go. They've just gotten bored with the project, or they're upset that they that it's not moving as quickly, and then they just zero out and they want to dump it from their collectors, their collector wallet. It's just fascinating to me. Yeah, I think I think there's something interesting that Ty just said in the interview where. We were we we are in a market where people realize they can make money. So there's more and more rock pools. Now, can we think that maybe free project that starts free with like a roadmap and an intent, really good intention, might be the the actual formula for success because you hand out free 
NFTs to the really like involved community members, you build that community and then you move forward from them and then you get traction. Like, Oh, I want to be part of it. Like, and then the flow price get higher and higher and higher. That might be something now there's so many projects now, like you don't know which one is going to make it, but I have bought as well. The Wabi punks because it was a free, it was a free project. I have like 20 of them and I like all of them. I've, I've kept them. I've, I'm not planning on selling them. I'm hoping like something good is going to come out of it. Yeah, I, and I and I agree with you. You know, Glotty Knights had to cancel their NFT launch because they didn't have the momentum and they weren't going to make the money that they originally thought that they were going to make. Now, I think that they should release those as, as free NFTs. You know, they're not going to get the thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand dollars that they would have gotten had they sold them at you know point zero two. But if you put it out there you automatically gain an audience. You automatically have people that are in the community and then you build it out from there. So yeah, I agree with you that I think free, you know, it's very hard though, right? Because when you look at the timeline, you know, CryptoKitties was super cheap. Uh, CryptoPunks was super cheap. Uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, when it first launched, it was super cheap. And then as the momentum gained, these projects became super no well-known and you know got bought up by important people and therefore you know it was even more uh more people getting involved and that's what raised the price but now in this down market it's better to release a free nft gain the community and engage with that community even though you're only going to make the you know residual on the royalties for when people trade it you just have to lower your expectations of what you're going to do for the community yeah, no, I agree. Hey, uh, do you own any Magic Mu uh, Magic Mushroom Clubhouse? Uh, no, I don't. Business? Yeah, see, I, I didn't want to, like, interrupt your whole week with, with all that, but uh, Magic Mushroom just released their companion NFTs. I think they're very cute. I, I think they're super adorable. Uh, they also opened the Magic Mushroom Marketplace, where holders of their NFT shrooms can collect mycelium, a token used to buy things on the marketplace. They also have some kind of contest going on right now, but it requires you to be in a group of four and my schedule, your schedule, everybody's schedule. I don't know. You know, maybe if you're in college, you have time to be on these discords, but I don't have time to be on these discords, meeting and chatting with people and finding friends that, you know, now I've made a group of four. So I'm a little disappointed that, you know, you can't do a solo for this contest. But anyway, that contest just started, I think, Wednesday of this this last week. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. What else? What else do we have going on? Uh, what What's going on with the uh, the blue checks? Uh, it's been it's been pretty quiet because of the market, and and a lot of guys are like in season, uh, right. either in season in 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 the US or uh, on vacation in right. Europe. So like they kind of want to uh, kind of take a break. Yeah. Um. So not not much, and I've been away for a while. Like my Discord has been like blowing up and i haven't checked anything sometimes like after two days i get like 400 notification and i don't want to get through it because it's overwhelming right. uh, i haven't opened open in like a few weeks as well like I'm, I'm just like taking a step back and, and with the market like being a bit crazy is just maybe a smart thing to do but yeah. again i'm not intending to selling any 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 of my assets and 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 yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks, next few months. It's going to be a, a an in, really interesting year, I think. Definitely, I agree. Hey, this was a lot of fun. This was a good episode. Yeah, it was a great interview. I think it was uh, it was awesome. I'm excited to see what how it's going to come out. Yeah. So uh, if you like this content, please hit the like button and subscribe and add notifications. We've just launched our website at trigonal.xyz. Check it out. Florian's going to be writing some stuff there. And I'm putting up old content from when I've run other uh, YouTube channels. Thank you for watching. And if you can, please add a comment. It really helps with this YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. And we appreciate you being here. Thank you, guys.